Some of the most enduring lines in Jurassic Park were placed long before any living dinosaurs were even revealed. A frustrated paleontologist leans in to scare an impatient bratty child. With the story of a Cretaceous six-foot turkey, the Velociraptor, you stare at him and he stares right back. And that's when the attack comes, not from the front, but from the side, from the other two raptors that you didn't even know were there. And he slashes at you with this, a six-inch retractable claw like a razor on the middle toe. Ignoring the artistic license around giving Velociraptor much grander proportions than it actually had, there are some key things to draw attention to here. Regardless of its true size, Velociraptor and its larger cousins were indeed truly frightening predators of the Cretaceous. And what made them so terrifying was their ability to take on animals much larger than themselves. And they did so using a combination of intelligence, teamwork, and horrible, ripping talons. In this video, we're going to go over some of the evidence for this, as well as a whole bunch more dinosaurs that took on more than they could handle and paid the price, but without whose sacrifice, we'd never have known anything about them. So let's begin with the turkey-sized turkey. Velociraptors certainly weren't six feet tall, but they were no turkey either. Standing about knee high and made primarily of knives, they had all the weaponry needed to bring a person to the ground swiftly, likely in a way not far off what Dr. Alan Grant was describing in the movie. Velociraptors did indeed have enlarged sickle-shaped toe claws, closer to six centimeters than six inches, but more than enough to embolden this animal to tackle prey far heavier than it was. This is evidenced very clearly in an exceptional fossil of a Velociraptor apparently locked in combat with a Protoceratops. It's claimed that this fighting dinosaur's fossil represents a battle fixed in time forever, from around 75 million years ago, between a pig-sized Protoceratops and the much lighter 15-kilogram Velociraptor. The raptor's arm is broken, snapped by the powerful bite of the Ceratopsian, and in return the Velociraptor's sickle claw is puncturing the neck of the herbivore. Perhaps both of these acts amounted in fatal blows to the animal's respective opponent, and the pair were encased in mud or sand almost immediately afterwards, but however they were preserved, it's about as close to definitive proof that Velociraptors took on prey far larger than they were themselves. It's also an important highlight of how dangerous this practice can be. Unfortunately, unlike the so-called Velociraptors in Jurassic Park, there's no evidence that this was a team effort. But there is some evidence of this from Deinonychus, a much closer species to what the Velociraptors depicted in the movie were like. Deinonychus anteropus didn't look much like the skin-covered raptors in Jurassic Park either. Both Velociraptor and Deinonychus were figured to have been covered in feathers, but this information came a little bit late for the movie franchise who were working with what was available at the time. Modern interpretations of this genus resemble those of the Velociraptor only much bigger, likely around the size of a wolf, this time weighing up to around 90 kilograms, and like in the movie, these guys hunted in packs. 110 million years ago, a group of these reptilian wolves got preserved in the act. Four specimens of Deinonychus anteropus were found around the carcass of a large ornithopod known as Tenotosaurus teleti. This was an animal over ten times the mass of the Deinonychus, and coupled with the fossil evidence of several predators sharing a carcass, it has led to the assumption of pack hunting. Whether they were pack animals or simply opportunistic collaborators is still up for debate. Crocodiles, for example, are often seen sharing carcasses, but they don't typically work together to bring prey down. Chemical analysis on the fossil teeth also suggests that the young of Deinonychus didn't share the same food source as the adults, which further throws into question the pack nature of the genus. But it's thought that it would certainly take more than one of these hunters to bring down an animal as large as Tenontosaurus. But even Deinonychus wasn't as big as Velociraptors were shown to be in the movies. To get to our real six-foot turkey, we need to go up a level. We need to go up to Utah Raptor. Feathered like both Velociraptor and Deinonychus, but substantially more massive. Weighing up to 700 kilos, Utahraptor, like its smaller kin, was able to tackle prey much larger than itself. 
These would be bear-sized raptors, as tall as a person and six meters long. And of course, they were packing the enormous killing claws that all of these raptors are well known for. This time, they really were six inches or 15 centimeters. And if a bear isn't intimidating enough, this one came fully loaded. An adult polar bear, the largest bear we have, can take on a one-ton walrus or beluga whale, about 30% heavier than they are, sometimes. And these prey don't have the best defensive weaponry, but add in the killing claws, swift movement, and most importantly, teamwork of the Utah Raptor, and the prey options suddenly become far larger and a lot more dangerous. The Utah Raptor Death Trap is the name given to a fossil find of at least six of these lethal beasts, all gathered around an enormous herbivorous iguanodontid of around two tons in weight. This time juveniles are present, providing stronger evidence for pack hunting in this species. Of course, the option of a more disorganized mobbing event caught in time is still on the table, and the evidence doesn't count this out, but we are getting a little closer with the remains of juveniles included in this find. These Utah raptors, pack hunters or not, all got killed in the same freak accident while feeding. It's not known what this accident was, but it allowed their remains to be frozen in time as fossils, and for us, therefore, to become witnesses to their existence a hundred million years later. But we can go bigger, and even further back, this time to the Jurassic, with clear evidence that raptors had been hunting enormous prey a long time before Utah raptors evolved. Allosaurus fragilis was a 9-meter, 1.5-ton theropod from the late Jurassic. This was one heavy predator, but its choice of prey was positively tank-like. One famous fossil of this species has a conspicuous hole in its pelvis that shows signs of having been infected. This hungry killer had been stabbed in the crotch by a 5-ton stegosaurus, probably surviving the wound for weeks until it finally succumbed. Stegosaurus was a walking fortress, and for good reason, hunters like the Allosaurus specialized in eating them. But as this fossil indicates, that strategy doesn't always work out. Killing a Stegosaurus was likely to have been a learned skill, but with the consequences of making a mistake so dire, it goes to show how brutal life must have been for both predators and prey throughout this period. High risk, high reward seems to be the theme of the dinosaur period, and as we'll see, there's almost nothing more high risk than a titanosaur. First, a quick reminder to please help us out by liking this video and stay subscribed so we can send you the next one. Now, as dangerous as a five-ton stegosaurus was, it still wasn't as massive as the prey some dinosaurs dared to attack. For some truly colossal ambition, we move forward in time to Cretaceous Madagascar. In Madagascar, during the time of the mid-sized titanosaur Rapetosaurus, there was a robust and compact bipedal predator called Majungasaurus, owning the top spot in the trophic web. This was Madagascar's apex predator until the end of the Cretaceous, and it would have weighed up to a ton, but it had significantly higher aspirations, as this was a hunter of the local titanosaurs. Majungasaurus had a different skull to many of its family members, Taller and wider in its structure, more able to tolerate the horizontal forces of a struggling animal. This all points to a strategy of sustained grasping, and the ability to hold on to a large victim after pinning it down with a mouthful of teeth and wrestling it into place with thick, powerful neck muscles. There were no victims larger than the 11-ton Rapatosaurus on all of Madagascar. Majungasaurus' teeth, unlike those of most theropods, were developed to reduce tearing rather than facilitate it, and this again points to a predator with the ability to bite down hard and hold on. Was this enough for an adult Majungasaurus to tackle Rapatosaurus alone, or did they hunt together? This is not something that's clear yet. But this would have been an extreme mismatch in sizes, especially if Majungasaurus was bold enough to take on an adult Rapatosaurus. But even this alarming size discrepancy can't hold a candle to the last item on our list. We have talked in other videos about how Giganotosaurus stalked the plains, picking off the ancestors of Argentinosaurus. But a little further down the line, this rivalry was still being reenacted by the descendants of both parties. 
Mapusaurus was a 10-meter-long, 5-ton predator occupying Cretaceous South America, at the same time as some of the largest animals ever to walk on land. Argentinosaurus may have weighed up to 80 tons and could reach 30 meters in length, yet even these giants had predators to contend with. A bone bed in Argentina shows multiple Mapusaurus specimens, apparently feasting as a family on a large Argentinosaurus. It should be repeated that none of this evidence is conclusive. There are no fossils showing direct conflict between the two monsters, and it's also possible that the numerous specimens arrived at the scene one at a time and died perhaps trying to exploit a food source trapped in mud before becoming stuck themselves. There are many ways to interpret this find, but the most exciting has to be a family group of reptilian predators, intelligent, ferocious, and organized, taking on one of the largest animals to have ever existed. To give a little perspective, lions have been documented working together to bring down elephants, but lions weigh around 150 kilos, and these cases are rare and highly dangerous occurrences in times of desperation. The contest between Mapusaurus and Argentinosaurus would be more similar to 70 kilogram wolves doing it. This would perhaps be the most epic terrestrial battle ever to have occurred. And yet the fact that it would even have to happen is a sign that danger was really the only option in the rich biotic ecosystems of the prehistoric giants. So Alan Grant wasn't really exaggerating. Teamwork, intelligence, and a lethality unlike anything we see today was probably just a regular Monday for a lot of predatory dinosaurs. But all of this highlights too the uncaring face of nature, the true embodiment of survival of the fittest, and just how much harder our ancestors would have had to struggle for mere survival than we ever do today. That's all for this video. Thanks again for watching.